Possibilities, Rising Stars of Contemporary Craft is a compelling exhibit now at the Mint Museum of Craft and Design in Charlotte. Who are these rising stars? Why is their work significant? And what possibilities do they foresee for contemporary craft? Hi, I'm the Artful Traveler. Today, I'm at the Penland School of Crafts. Let's find out why this historic school has been such a significant resource for artists. Then, let's meet the rising stars of contemporary craft. Penland uh, dates back to 1929, um, and it was started by a woman named Lucy Morgan, who had been running a craft-based economic development program here that was based around weaving and then pottery and metals and a couple of other things. And that evolved into a school which started drawing uh, both a national and international audience. The school has also helped create uh, a very vibrant, uh, active community of craft artists in Western North Carolina. Um, it's not the only reason there are craft artists in Western North Carolina, but it's, it's a very significant part of that. I'm Cristina Cordova, and um, I'm from Puerto Rico originally, and I work in ceramics. Um, I consider myself a ceramic sculptor. Having lived here uh, in this great place, uh, Penland, for a couple of years, I felt that, you know, mo most recently I've been influenced by different artists that are working on different media. And so um, I think my context and uh, my content has been enhanced by just thinking beyond clay. The first one that um, we committed to is called um, El Coleccionista. And it has, um, it's a standing figure and it has a, a deer-like creature next to it. Uh, the second piece is called Paseante, and it's a hyperbolic androgynous figure that's too big for the creature riding this, um, again, deer-like specimen of sorts. And the third one is an installation piece called Correria, and then in between parentheses, Tiritapate, which is dodgeball. I feel that the image of what I want to make might be independent from the craft, but I have to negotiate it through the medium. I have worked myself through the layers of this material. But I'm not necessarily thinking of it first when I'm thinking of the images. So that's where I see myself. And I'm hoping that the work that I do uh, continues to reflect that and uphold those things and allows me to keep expanding on a material that was so traditional at one point, but truly is now very versatile for other things that might not be what you might expect. I'm Brent Skidmore. I live in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, which I see as a, an amazing place to live if you're an artist uh, working in any medium. Uh, I work mostly in wood. My background is in cast metals. Uh, I think it's important to say that I got out of cast metals because um, the labor-intensive part of it and also the machismo that's associated with that studio wasn't really a good fit for me, but I did that for a number of years. And that's where also you see an influence of the metallic finishes in the work and the, the metal, uh, the things that appear to be metal that aren't metal. The work that's in the Possibility Show, one is called uh, Stewart's Nighttime Canyon Sky. That's named after my seven-year-old son. And one's called Maxwell's Mellow Mirror, and that's a floor-length mirror. And that's my other son. And then the other one is, I think it's called Low Slung Boulder. Some people's view of what is uh, American craft now, or you know, the, or the contemporary American craft, is what, I, what I've always viewed as sculpture. And so now I'm kind of full circle back to starting as a sculptor, making things that are functional, but really knowing always that what we're dealing with are, are simple elements of design, you know, and it's line, form, color, light, shape, you know, um, mass, volume, it's, and it's all, of, and then you add this material aspect to it. My name is Annie Lomansky, and I make mixed media, what I consider mixed media sculpture. Um, the basis of my sculpture is a copper rod armature that I then hand stitch various materials onto it. And that the materials can be anything from a paper doily to rawhide, anywhere in between. The four pieces at the Mint Show um, are all animals. Monkey Goes to Bollywood. This is about the number of monkeys that coexist with the population of New Delhi on a not so friendly basis all of the time. The shark is called the blue shark and it's about an estimated million sharks that are killed every year just for their shark fins. There's the rat, which is called ratus manus, and when the viewer looks at it, you see a reflection in the rat. And the deer is called Deerfield USA 
and the imagery is, it's aerial imagery of a housing development, a suburban housing development. The craft is all, it's all about the making of the piece, you know, the craftsmanship. And that is what I am drawn to in pieces. It's great if there's a concept behind it, but really what I love is a well-made object. That speaks to me on an emotional level. Uh, my name is Devin Burgess, and I'm from Montpelier, Vermont. I went to school for glass, and I'm a glass blower and also a glass artist. Um, I don't generally use the term glass blower for the whole thing because glass blowers see more as a trade, and the, what I do and more of my sculptural work um, doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be with glass, but I find ways that glass is able to uh, utilize all the ideas I want to put together in one concise format. There's the white set at the mint where it'll be a white bottle form, but it'll go up one side, bring your eye down around, and then when you hit another spot of negative space, these, all these off-center bottlenecks are kind of flowing in and out from one form to the other. There's uh, one set of what I call um, the poulet sans tête, and those are the headless chickens. The, the black funnel forms, growing up I did a lot of drawing, and um, I just love texture and line quality. I think I am a North Carolina craftsman. I'm, I'm in North Carolina. I, 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 I blow glass, which is a craft. Um, I think it's also an art form. I don't think everyone that, that blows glass is necessarily a crafter. Um, I think there's, and I don't know what point it turns into what the difference between that and art is. My name is Vivian Beer. Um, I make uh, furniture and sculpture and it's made of metal and it has automotive finishes on it so it really transcends the visual impact of it just being metal it has color to it and color is very important to my work the first one is scion it was really where i started to identify that the three-dimensional objects i was making were drawing Windblown couch, well that one's kind of, if you were caught in a nor'easter um, on the water, that's where you would be. The third is sensation. Totally new development for me. It's a sculpture rather than a functional piece. I'm looking at a little bit of everything and taking a little bit of everything, daydreaming, and um, abstracting it into a drawing or some kind of linear pattern into flatness. So then I take that and I martini shaker it with furniture in three-dimensional objects where somebody is entering into it physically or imaginatively enter into it in the sculpture but always via that access point of domestic objects and intimacy, the intimacy we have with furniture objects. My name is Gerilyn Burden. Right now I work in earthenware. I was in New Mexico in the, the summer in between my two years of graduate school and I was looking at the metates and the mortars and pestles from uh, Native Americans and these things where they're flat, enormous stones that have become bowls through use. And so they're not symmetrical, they're very heavy and massive. And I was just interested in them as forms, and um, so I started making them as closely as I could um, out of clay. My pieces in the show, the largest one is called Fold, and it's a bowl that's been sort of cut and twisted. And one, another piece called Echo, it's as if you could take it and fold it up and it would be a solid form, but as it's split apart, one side is echoing the other side. And the last piece is called Eddy. And that I'm thinking of um, water, where it forms a little pool and it swirls around in a little eddy. Penland, it's living there. It's so many people come through there uh, that you, you just see so many different people's work and perspectives and what they have to say about their work and how they make their work. And um, it's a really wonderful place to live. Be sure to check out Possibilities, Rising Stars of Contemporary Craft at the Mint Museum of Craft and Design in Charlotte through November 30th. At the Penland School of Crafts, I'm the Artful Traveler.